Hello, my name is Lloyd Pope and I'm a dentist employed by TRICARE in the educational department. I want to talk to you today a little bit about socket preservation and some of the materials and instruments that are involved in that treatment option. When a tooth is extracted, the blood clot converts to new bone. But if it's not maintained in place using an implant, over a period of time the bone will start to resorb and it will normally resolve from the buccal or the labial surface towards the plate or, or lingual surface. It can resolve up to 30 to 40 percent. So it's important to do some form of socket preservation if an implant isn't going to be placed immediately. The first stage is atraumatic extraction and there are a variety of instruments available to enable you to do that. The first one I want to talk to you about is called a peritome and this is the instrument that is most favoured by people doing implantology and also people that are very concerned about the buccal plate preservation. Essentially they are a very thin blade which is used to cut down around the periodontal ligament to loosen the root. You can get them in a variety of shapes, most of them are either straight or angled. The angled ones are to enable you to actually get access towards the posterior region of the mouth. The next instrument I wanted to talk to you about is called a luxator. And this is like a halfway house between a peritome and a conventional elevator like a Coupland's. It's a lot thinner and again it's designed to enable you to gain access along the long surface of the root and to actually cut the periodontal ligament around the root so that the tooth is loosened. They are available again in sort of straight or angled options and different curvatures, different widths etc. The next instrument or range of instruments I wanted to talk to you about is something called an Exomed. This is a device that uses a a principle similar to a pulley to lift an engine out of a car. So you have a screw that engages into the root of the tooth and then you have a pulley system and a, a winding device that enables you to apply a vertical pressure to pull the root atraumatically out, out of the socket. There will be a short link at the end of the video to enable you to look at some videos if you want to find out more about items like the Exomed. The other range of instruments that are important are forceps and some of the manufacturers produce what they call atraumatic forceps which are finer than the forceps of more conventional types. So this is a conventional type of forcep and you can notice how broad the blade is and this is the atraumatic ones and you can see that the, the blades are much finer, there's more of a gap between the two blades so that it's easier to pass them up the length of the root and to enable you to extract the tooth more atraumatically. So we've talked about atraumatic extractions, now let's have a chat about the socket preservation procedure itself. If you're not going to place an immediate implant then it's important to do a socket preservation because it will help maintain bone for a lot longer and more bone. This is important if you're going to place an implant at a later period of time or even if you're not going to place an implant then if you're going to do a bridge then it will give you a better emergence profile for your pontic or if you're going to place an, a denture then it will give you more bone to help retain the denture. So immediately after extracting the tooth the first thing to do is to make sure there's no infection at the bottom of the socket and this is where an instrument like a Lucas scraper is very important. It's like an extended excavator and you can pass down the socket and you can scrape out any granulation tissue or any infection that might be present at the bottom and it also it means that there's a good blood flow which is important for socket preservation. We'll now go on to talk a little bit about some of the different types of bone regeneration materials that are available. There are three basic types of material, allograft materials, xenograft materials and synthetic materials. The allograft materials are made from the same species as the recipient that's going to take the material. So obviously human bone. These materials are treated, that all the proteins are removed to make sure that they're safe, they're irradiated and then they are supplied either in granules or lumps. For a socket preservation technique then granules would be used 
and the granules would be put into the socket and then covered over with a membrane. The next range of materials that I want to talk to you about are the xenograft materials. The xenograft materials are made from a different species to the recipient and there are three basic types of material that are popular. There's the bovine cow-based materials, the porcine pig-based materials and the equine horse-based materials. This gives you the opportunity, depending on your own personal preference or those of the patients, to use whichever type of material or animal source is most appropriate to you. The most common bovine material is one called BioOS. Now there is a disadvantage with this material in as much as when it's treated, it is heated to a very high temperature and it becomes ceramatized. This means it becomes very hard and it won't actually resorb. So you will find that if you were to go back into a socket 5, 10 or even 15 years later, you would still find lumps of unreacted material actually present within that bit of bone. We supply a range of materials that are made either from pig's bone or horse's bone and these are the osteobiol materials that you can see here. They're available either pig bone or horse's bone. Again it gives you the option to use whichever you prefer depending on any personal preferences. The most popular ones are the porcine materials because porcine bone is the most similar to human bone. It's made from very young pigs and it converts to new bone very, very quickly to the extent that within about 12 to 24 months, 100% of the genos material will have converted to new bone. The equine option is made from horses bone from, and from slightly older horses. So that takes a little bit longer for the bone to actually convert to new bone. But when it has actually converted, it will completely convert over a longer period of time. Genos materials are provided in granules and in order to use them, the granules are taken out of the packet, put into a sterile container and then hydrated either with sterile saline or some of the patient's blood. And this hydrates the material before it is actually put into the socket itself. One of the advantages of the osteobiol range of granules is that as they absorb the moisture, they expand to about 20% of the extra volume. However, if you want greater convenience, we can also supply the same granules, but prehydrated in a syringe. This is called MP3. And this has the advantage that when you remove the cap, it can be literally dispensed straight out of the syringe into the socket, which means there's no need to hydrate the granules. There's no need for you to wait. There's no need for you to scoop them up and to try and transfer them into the socket. It can be done very quickly and very easily. As an alternative to that, we also do a product called GTO, which is the same granules as the MP3, but it's been mixed with a TSV gel, which makes it a bit stickier and it makes it even easier for you to shape it and to position it where you want to position it. So that's the Genos range of materials. I'm now going to tell you a little bit about the synthetic materials. The synthetic materials are made from calcium and sulfate, and they've got all the basic components that you find in bone. They are quite reasonably popular, but the disadvantage is that the calcium phosphate will actually resorb much quicker, so they don't last as long. But they do make a reasonable alternative for any patients that don't want to use any of the animal-based products. The main product that we supply is called Orgma, and in a short while I'm going to show you how Orgma is activated and used. The next thing to do is to actually use something like a collagen cube or a membrane in order to seal the material in place. The collagen cubes come in packages like this. You open the packet, take out the, the cube and it can be compressed a little bit. It's made of collagen and it forms part of a blood clot over the top of the bone material. Alternatively, 
you can use a membrane, which is a resorbable membrane, which obviously means that over a period of time, it will break down and it will disappear. With all the membranes, they have two sides. There's a rough side, which goes towards the socket itself, and then there's a smooth side, which is faces towards the overlying mucosa. Whichever of these two options that you use, it's then important to seal the, the mucosa over the top as much as possible using a suture. And there are a variety of different suture materials available. So, now I'm going to demonstrate the Augma Bond Appetite synthetic material to you. So it's applied in a syringe. There's powder at this end of the syringe and a liquid at this part of the syringe. Halfway along the syringe, there's a little blue line. The technique is to compress the plunger so that the liquid is mixed in with the powder and you compress the plunger until it reaches the blue line. Then you remove the end of the cap, dispense it into the socket, it's still wet at that point, and then you take a dry gauze, press on the surface of the powder liquid mixture and it will set hard. There's no need to use a membrane, so you can then close the soft tissues over the top and suture them in place. So now let me show you in reality how this works. So, compress the, the plunger so that the liquid is mixed in with the powder. It takes some time to actually get it to completely mix in. Once it's completely mixed in, you can then take the cap off, dispense the, dispense the bond appetite into the socket. Incidentally, this is the same sort of technique that you would get with MP3, where you can dispense the MP3 straight into the socket. Then you would shape the material to the shape that you want it to be. Take a dry gauze, press it on, and that completes the setting process. So that's Bond Appetite from Augma. So, in conclusion, for a good result, you need a good atraumatic extraction procedure, socket preservation using either allergenic, xenographic, or synthetic bone regeneration materials. This is then covered using either a collagen cube or a resolvable membrane and then the mucosa sutured in place. I hope you found this video of help. All the links are down below. Please subscribe to the TRICARE YouTube channel.